There we go. This is staff meeting on June 30th. We've had a little collision here. Uh, Brad and I were scheduled to talk about um, uh, lying today. And uh, I double booked myself for the staff meeting in Brad's conversation. God knows why. Um, well, I don't have to say that. It's because I'm scatterbrained. In any event, the, uh, the, we're, we're going to have a little bit of, of uh, uh, staff meeting nonsense to start off with. And I was just before Brad told me to hit the record button, you numbskull. He didn't say it like that. He was actually good natured. And uh, I was talking about, um, what was I talking about? Okay. See, you weren't even listening. Oh, yeah. So it doesn't matter what I was talking about because no, nobody was listening. Uh, no more than it matters to you, sir. <laughs> I, I can't recollect it. What a crowd. You guys are brutal. Um, seriously, I forgot what I was talking about. You were framing the meeting, talking about lying. You double booked yourself. Well, before that, like before I talked about that. Oh, we were talking about not making it to 2030. Yes. Oh, yeah. Dollar. Oh, the dollar. Thank you. So uh, we, we started off with, uh, well, you know, was, uh, I asked Martin, what are the guys saying? What's the trend in the discourse today and uh, the, the, over this week? And he says, well, it's just the complaining about the everything going to hell, right? And I'm, I'm a, yeah, of course. But I said, right on schedule as predicted. Well, and then we're just talking about how, and I was predicting it was closer to 2020. Uh, and I know why I'm, I'm off in my predictions, because I tend to I tend to not appreciate how long it takes the public to come around, right? Uh, so then uh, some people were predicting 2030, but most people were predicting around 2025. Well, COVID advanced it. So we're gonna have the guy, we sort of broke it in the middle between the 2025s and the 2020 predictions. So it's 2022 and 2023, it's gonna be really sucky. So uh, we're gonna, we're sitting here laughing that, you know, yeah, well, the cycle ended up exactly as everybody predicted, and it's about on schedule with COVID accelerating it a little bit. But in general, I think the interesting part is how um, the combination of social media uh, uh, isolation uh, on top of the long-term trend to live in, uh, what do you call it? What do, what do we raise chickens in? They're, they're little cocks. Oops. You know what? You ever you know a farm raised chickens are like that? Yes. Yeah, they're not coops. They they actually can't even stand on them. In them. Oh, you mean the little boxes that? Yeah, they the little in. boxes. The I box don't know what they chickens. call this. So we're living in our nice little houses and condos and what and apartments, but we're li basically living like chickens, um, like farm raised chickens. Um, in pursuit of the financial uh, administ financial sector's dream of creating a uh, of managing us all through for fun and profit, uh, so um, oh, so depressing to think about it. So you know, of course, one of the things that people said, people were saying, a lot of people were saying, and this is very libertarian thinking, that the dollar would uh, be screwed. And I was like, eh, eh, no. Uh, why? Because if the world turns shit, we're the only safe place to put money. Uh, and so uh, the money is going to fly to the has been. So I, I, what I've been interested in this week is I was observing the cash <laughs> flying to America. And I said, this is going to continue to happen because there's nowhere else to put it. And it's kind of interesting because we were worried about the baby boomers drawing down capital. And so, but what's happening, of course, is the baby draw, boomers are drawing down capital, but the world market is substituting it. And so, I don't have, I don't have enough napkin math. <laughs> In other words, here's the real answer: I'm too lazy to spend the three weeks necessary to figure that out and be certain about it. So I'm going to wait. Because sometimes in the next three months, somebody's going to do that math and save me the effort. So I'm going to sit here and say, somebody can go do that. But uh, we'll get the napkin math pretty carefully 
pretty pretty soon. And someone will say, by and large, money is going to flow this way, et cetera. Something we all, not we all, is something, I want to say cycle thinkers, but it's wrong. Uh, cycle thinkers, cycle thinking is a little bit like stock market cycles, right? Statistics. It, it's, it's based on premises that are by and large true. But by and large doesn't mean not subject to, to shocks and sh et cetera, right? So uh, shocks and changes. Well, the big change, of course, that isn't a shock is demographic and economic and geostrategic changes that are playing out now as we return to the normal, the conflict of civilizations. So what's, what's happened is though, is that we could predict the end of this cycle and we can predict the beginning of the next one uh, because these are logical. What we can't tell about is the noise that happens in the, during the transition. In other words, there's so much going on right now, which is why everybody says it's a general trend downward. There's so much going on right now, it's just impossible to make any, any future prediction. Uh, the only, and, and the way you do the, a future prediction on this scale is you don't try to figure out a trend, you try to figure out what are the limits. You know, what are, what's binding everything? And what's binding everything is the, really the exhaustion of the opportunity to be made from the um, industrial revolution. In other words, we've we've uh, we've spent 500 years dragging mankind out of agrarianism into a new state, and that transition has almost completed. And what's happened is those people who were early movers were able to capture the benefit, and those people who were late movers, India. South America, uh, um, the Middle East, and of course Africa, They're, they don't have this inor inordinate disparity in knowledge, technology, and institutions to take advantage of. So it's kind of hard to see them getting a lot better uh, in, in very rapidly. So that's my view of that universe, which is probably the same as everyone. You mean? Let's do a guy from Rand. A guy from Rand yesterday, X Rand. I don't know if you know who Rand is, but they're like they're like the private sector CIA. <laughs> um, and uh, he was, you know, I'm like, I, I can't find anything at all wrong with what he's saying. I mean, if you look at the top people, all that varies is they're a bit closer to this part of the triangle than that one, right? But they're all saying the same thing. So that's where I think we are. So the idea that things are gonna get shitty, well, we're gonna, we got used to COVID, we're gonna get used to things being shitty. And then we're once we're used to it, we'll do the three year forgetting curve. And once we have the three year forgetting curve, we won't notice that it's getting shitty anymore. That'll just be new normal. And now instead of looking to defend against the new shitties, what we'd be doing is looking for opportunities because that's what, uh, that's what heuristics organisms do. And that's what we'll do. So a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a bunch of bullshit. Just humans doing whatever we do. And, and we care about the near term. And despite the fact that most of our long-term stuff is determined. They should know they're living one of those new shitties right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, this funny thing, a guy put out a video yesterday. Uh, so I just was surprised. I'm surprised that the, that the man, the, the men, it's, there's the manosphere on dating, but there's the menosphere on YouTube, which is like the people who are independent that actually can get their ideas out now. And so you're seeing all this stuff come out in, in common prose and common voice that used to be published in papers, right, by, by academics. So this guy comes out yesterday, he's like, well, they're, they're used, the used car market just crashed. And uh, which right, and so the I don't know if you know this, but prices of used cars in the United States have been going up because there weren't new cars and some other things, and and etc. And so there are people getting into debt for 
you're rolling increasing rollover debt to get into continue to get into newer cars. So that mo price market is collapsing. The housing market is just starting, right? The the job market is what's we're constrained on jobs. So that's what's holding up inflation. So I don't know. I think I think a lot of stuff's going on. But if you, so, if you're if you're a if you're living on the margins, it sucks dick. But if you're a social scientist, it's fascinating. It's like I said in, in, when I was living in Ukraine. I mean, I I just I mean I couldn't run this experiment, right? To be part of the revolution there, it was fascinating. So it wasn't fascinating for the guys who got shot, mm. or the people who or the cops who got lit on fire. <laughs> My Molotov cocktails, but uh, and it certainly wasn't fun for uh, the people who were in the bureaucracy. But as a social scientist, it was fascinating. I learned so much. <laughs> Martin's smiling. What are you saying? What's up? I've always he's see the, the words don't come out his mouth. The idea comes into his head, and the words don't come out. So you have to not. You have to learn not to control your impulses and just let it flow, Mark. Let all the sarcasm, let all the commentary just spill out onto the world like you're showering it with gifts of flowers. We'd never survive. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I really didn't have any. I just found it amusing. <clears throat> oh, sorry, what? I just found the framing amusing. Okay. <laughs> I came up with some um, observations yesterday. I was talking to a lady who works at Walmart. And she was complaining about the people's bad behavior to the the customer's bad behavior to the uh, employees of Walmart. And I said, it goes like this. People are inhibited from bad behavior when they have the potential for loss of social status. So when they're around people they perceive of as higher social status, they will behave. If they perceive you as lower social status, they are more likely to misbehave. That works on everyone but confident, violent men. Yes. <laughs> Correct. Well, they don't, that, they're not depending on anything besides their uh, confidence and violence for their social status. <laughs> well, it's like, that's I, what, I, have I, you ever, you meet these giant, that, go ahead. Sorry. You could afford good men that avenue. Yes. Because it's a, nece it's a necessary avenue that we starve men of. And those are men for the boys to, to imitate, really. Go ahead, Kurt. I, that was all I had to say. No, I, I, I think. So then we had a, had a patient that was, he was righteously upset with the, so the uh, medical establishment for um, doing what it does, which is trying not to pay. They were doing a good job of not paying for what he eventually paid for himself, but he still was making a lot of noise in the staff's years. And I, I informed the staff of this uh, process, the, uh, the status and, uh, and the misbehavior. And so I, that guy was laying in wait for me at the end of the day, and he's outside in the parking lot. So I met him in the parking lot. And he says, I've got good news and bad news. I said, let's start with the bad news. Bad news is you're misbehaving. And you need to stop misbehaving because you're, you're taking your frustrations out on the wrong people. And so he was a little bit chagrined by that, and we went on. And I had to explain to him, he was told me that he was mechanically inept. And he was, because he, he had me, you ever see one of these nebulizers? Okay, so nebulizer is a, a pump, a pipe with a little like mouthpiece. Mm -hmm. He wanted me to help him show to him how to assemble it and operate. It. You gotta be kidding me. I'm not that good, Kurt. I don't care. You can't make humor up that, you can't make a joke that good? No, yeah. sir. I, I was sitting on the outside. I, I had to get out of the sun so I wouldn't get um, a sunburn on my dome. Mm -hmm. And um, we sat on the, on the uh, brick work out in front of the building and I, I showed him patiently how to assemble the piece, the three pieces of the machine. Okay, okay I'm sitting here thinking my, my 84 year old <laughs> right. rotund suffocating mother uh, can put that could put that thing together, right? And this guy can. Well, you know what? this was interesting. It was an emblematic discussion because um, he then he's like he was complaining about the medical establishment and failing to uh, buy the thing for him in a timely manner and provide it for him. 
that his his wife eventually bought and she provided it for him and um and i said well it's just this machine is operating the way it's supposed to operate which is um slow and and i'm supposed to kick it a bunch of times and and you know you're supposed to complain to your insurance company or something he goes don't you have a hospital administrator i said yeah, but that's not his job. And, and, uh, but I will make sure the administration reaches out to you so you can make your complaint. And then I called the administration up and said, he's going to make a complaint. And it, and it, but the, the, the thing, this is interesting to me because it was like, he's thinking in ideal terms. Yes. And he's got an ideal in his mind. And it's just, he's trying to make the ideal, he's trying to realize the ideal in the real world, which is not going to happen. And I was like, but it took that experience for me to understand that. And that was kind of interesting to observe. That's a really great example. I usually think about it as there's a very well-educated woman lived next door to me, right? And her husband. Her husband I, is a good guy. Uh, and she's your typical neurotic, but highly educated woman. And she would try to always extend her ideal concept of everything to larger scales. So what should happen to the family in a relationship should happen to the family. Having a family should happen in a business, which should happen in a business. And so everything should operate at her scale of concept. And I was like, you, you do realize that by the time you start out with the family and you get to the state, the rules are completely the opposite. Yeah. They're not even close. They're not, they're inverse. The economy works the opposite of your family. Right? And you know it wants to it wants to exclude participants who are unfit. Yeah. His job. yeah. <clears throat> and the family job is to steal. Well, that's fitness. the unkind way of putting it, but yes. And sometimes it doesn't even work in family. It's not working. <laughs> Neither are working, even a little bit. <clears throat> so, but you know, an economy is time to equilibrate. So, I mean, if in your house you save something that is a savings but if you save something in the economy some something ha something compensates for it right and so if you spend something something compensates for it. so all, what i'm trying to get a point across is almost everything you do is neutralized it's sort of like having enough people vote right if enough people who are different opinion vote i mean they basically neutralize each other to the fact that the votes are then decided by the noise in the middle who are the most incompetent and ignorant people, which is what happens in large scale democracies. You, 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 your, your decisions are made by the people with the least competency. Well, that, that assumes people are deciding anything. That's true, that's true. Okay, well, I mean, uh, okay, so there's a difference between the voting getting done, which is what I'm saying, and the, what happens once the voting is completed, then you're right on that also too. So, um, or, or that they're there, or that they have, I would go back and say, well, it's dependent upon the presumption that anything the people are told is true, because you're not required to write a contract for your representation, right? And actually they tried to, who's it? Newt Gingrich tried to start this, which was brilliant. If you write a contract, right, then this is what you're you're saying you're going to do, and you're bound by that because the people are voting for what you promise. Well, if they had, if everybody had to do that, of course, well, what would happen is they they make non-committal contracts, right? So they yeah, have contracts between peoples that they are unable to fulfill like, right. the duties within, yeah. for sure. Anyway. So. So where does that leave us? With the law. Right, it leaves us with an interesting uh, problem, which is the subtopic I wanted to talk about today, which is that, you know how hard it is for us to get to talk about the law and every other time except June when the fucking Supreme Court is issuing uh, controversial statements. It's mm. like, this is our version of Christmas. Yeah. For the retailers. Uh, and I just internalized that this year. I'm thinking that this ought to become where we do most of our public outreach is the month of, month, whenever the Supreme Court in whatever country issues its rulings, 
because that's the only time people are paying attention to the law. <laughs> no. It is a focusing event. Because <clears throat> otherwise you bring it up and they're like, well, what does that have to do with because they don't they don't finish the because. The because is because we're just moralizing here and doing nothing except jerking off, right? I mean, that's really what's happening. Is people are just chit-chattering uh, to sedate themselves. Whereas the law would actually give you the chance to act on something. So, um, <clears throat> so that's my one of my there's like, there's what? one uh, there's one other time where people are paying attention to the law. That's when it's punishing them. <laughs> so. We have so much work to do, guys. It's terrible. Uh, maybe if uh. People who view the recent rulings as punishments, that's a good place to start because they're a problem. Their cognition is ruined. They, especially abortion. Well, I mean, abortion is, abortion is one of the hardest problems, right? Abortion and homosexuality, two hard problems. For them to understand? For well, because people have, I mean, a religion could be another one, right? But abortion is just the most uh, most uh, material one. Homosexuality, a little less so, and marriage, uh, I mean, uh, and religion, less so. Uh, these things have import, but abortion has immediate, it, 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 impo it, it has a huge impact of responsibility. Yeah. I, I like that it open. I like that it opens up the conversation about killing. That's what I, I like about it, it because it brings it to the table because you're, what we're saying is you're attempting to mandate access to a killing, right? We, we can't do that because you have to, we have to twist someone's arm in order to perpetrate a, uh, a killing, right? right. People are morally opposed to killings. So you can't make someone give you one. So we can't mandate it, any doctor to perform a killing, but we do have to have the conversation about its merits as a procedure uh, to put eugenic pressure on the polity and it brings up killing as a subject. We kill people for reasons. We should kill babies, like least of all, not most of all. Yes. So let's discuss killing the people that we should be killing on the backs of the, the abhorrent, Especially like, when there's a killing wait. babies is okay. There's a shortage of babies. Can we keep there's the a shortage scale? of, exactly, there's a shortage of babies, exactly. Do you want to keep the scale of the killing the same? I mean, just yeah, I mean, it's outrageous. It. Uh, somebody uh, who put that out, uh, but it was like there's seventy nine thousand uh, abortions or eighty thousand abortions in Florida, right? Right. We, the whole Civil War, which is the bloodiest war per capita we've had, was five hundred thousand, right? Uh, all we, we, I can't remember. We lost what. 120,000 people in Afghanistan, 10,000, right, injured. So and we, we list four times that in one year in abortions, right? So uh, now the, so I, I'm not, I'm not sure I have an opinion on abortion in general. I mean, I, I'm just not sure I do. I have a problem with lying about it. It's a killing. We, Political tolerance for killings is a political choice. It's not decidable. In other words, the, the, in other words, the, there's no scientific way of judging a killing, right? It's just a killing, right? It's an irreciprocity, right? Now, yep. you're, you get into all these, the, the discussion could get deep, and I'm perfectly capable of making discussion, but in my sense, I don't really care. What I care about is that it's undecidable and therefore it's a local or a state, but it's not a federal decision. And that's all, right? I mean, uh, and if it helps, and if it helps conservative states keep liberals out and conservatives in, and it helps liberal state keep liberals in and conservatives out, that's fantastic. That only helps sortition. So, uh, you know, the, the problem of this, which Brad just, I was trying to get to what Brad suggested there, which is it's a misunderstanding of scale, is people are trying to take personal issues 
or family issues or local issues or, or, and, or state issues and make it a federal issue, at which point they're trying to impose their preference on others, right? Instead of, a lot, since it's undecidable, it's a preference, it's a choice. You know, whether if I kill you and you kill me, that's decidable. It's a violation of reciprocity. If you kill a child, well, we, that's, I mean, a baby, right? I mean, uh, I, women have killed more babies in history than men have killed each other in war. I mean, the freaking, the go to, this is one of the horrors of, of investigating sewers and uh, toilets in the in archaeology is you realize that women throw babies in them at the same rate they throw fecal matter. So mm-hmm. murdering babies is a long-term trend of women. Murdering men in war, murdering criminals. Um, you know, Hansel and Gretel is a stepmother story, not a, right? What do stepmothers do? Uh, they got, they in, kill, they, in, well, in the, in the first edition of Grimm's Tale, it was the mother. It was the mother, correct, right? Uh, and so, so the so the problem is, mothers would do that. They would expose their children. They would they're, kill. They're, off dem- they're demonstrating that that is what they want as a preference by their tantrum that they're throwing in right. response to the court. They're, they're saying they want to kill about the right to kill babies. That's what right. they're saying. Okay, so so I hold on. So the problem is legally that's not decidable. I know. I know. Right. And so th- that means it's a preference. If it's a right. preference that, and, and the preferences differ, then, then it's what it is. Now, the problem I have is the word settled law. Right. Courts do not produce settled law. Courts adjudicate that law has been settled by the people. Well, I, I see two separate issues here. One is abortion in itself which right. is what you're talking about. And uh, they're, they're treating it as some sort of desirable human sacrifice as a part of the religion. I see. Well, the Satanists are, are fomenting a, um, a claim that it is a religious right. Yes. They well, get to do that too. There, uh, I, of course, here's the answer. There are no religious rights. <laughs> um, rights, rights are emergent from reciprocal yeah, obligation there are no religious rights there are religious preferences but there are no religious rights so in uh so so the the so like martin said there's actually you you actually broke it into two categories there um uh i'm good what i see is is it's a demonstration a female fear of responsibility. That's all. Accountability. And accountability. They don't well, want to reg- regulate their self control during, before or during sex. They don't want to have regulate their behavior once they've been pregnant and have a child. Great. I don't want to regulate my behavior by not raping, pillaging, and looting and murdering. I don't want to regulate that behavior. I guarantee you, I would have a happier life as a Viking than I do as a CEO. Well, the enemy obviously appealed to that intuition. He has appealed to many of the worst female intuitions. So, but, but he has his own goals, obviously. He wants there to be less of us. Yes. Okay, so wait, wait, that, that's another dimension, right? So that's the enemy's dimension. So we've got we've got the 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 undecided, the problem of undecidability of abortion, right? And therefore it's a preference. So you can't impose your preference on someone else because it's undecidable. Then we have the problem of what's the law's job, especially the law's job in Western civilization, given the uniqueness of Western civilization, Christianity. And then the third thing is we have is the enemy. The enemy's use of this stuff to bait, bait and cause hazard. Well, <clears throat> so I started out with wanting to talk about this because I want to talk about the law. Um, uh, but those are three topics, right? So we covered, let's cover the enemy last, okay? And if I forget, please try to remind me. So the, the, the first part is abortion is undecidable. It's a killing, right? We, we uh, uh, killing is a violation of reciprocity. 
right? We, uh, in, excuse me, reciprocity consists of ensuring one another uh, of uh, self-determination by self-determined means. We, reci a violation of reciprocity is, a killing is a violation of reciprocity. You have to act to kill an abor aborted baby. And so uh, it's a, it, but the difference is, is it because it's undecidable and some of us have very different moral intuitions about it, it's unsettled law. Right, and unsettled law has to remain political preference. So, the so for some reason the court the people think the court settles law. Uh, court said this is none of our business. The court said this is none of our business. The court can only set. You know, there's there's political law, right? Choice law, and there's scientific law, reciprocity. The court, excuse me, I, I, gave a, I, gave, I messed that up. Let's switch it around. There's undecidable, there's decidable, and there's um, a procedural. That's clear. Right? Yeah. So, 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 for, so, for example, uh, and these are uh, three different ways people confuse the three kinds of law as if there's just one kind. So a positive says, as long as it follows procedure, it's legitimate, right? And natural law person says, as long as it's reciprocal, it's legitimate. And, it's, and, a, and a sophist says, as long as I, uh, I think it's moral, it's right, right? These are three different universes, so the, the normative, the scientific, and the pr procedural. So this is procedural is called positive law. Of course, what you want is all three of these to align. You want the moral intuition to be encoded and you want the, pro the process of encoding to be procedure. So that's how our government is set up. So that informs your intuitions correctly. Correct. And so the, our, our government, so the problem is that our government was scientific at the time it was founded. It became utopian and, or at least idealistic and philosophical in the 1800s. And it became, because the Industrial Revolution let us believe us silly things. And then Marx, Marxists and, and the postmodernists came into America and they institute, tried to destroy our institutional law. But if you, as long as you understand there's my moral intuition, which varies, the natural law, which doesn't, but it doesn't account for variations in preference. That, that means it's political. And there's procedural law, which is attempt to see if we can produce commons, right, across groups of people despite our differences. Does this make sense? I, I can't tell. If I'm thinking. So, you know, we're natural. We're, we're sort of, the, we're the, we do all three. Yes. Right? We do all three. We say there's variation in, in preference, mm -hmm. right? Which be, that means that it's the, that the, 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 the the procedure is local because it's not decidable by natural law. It has to be procedural and it has to be local. Then there's natural law, which is like, well, it's fucking decidable. Therefore, the procedure doesn't matter and, it, uh, and your preference doesn't matter. And then there's procedural, which would say the natural law doesn't matter and your preference doesn't matter. That's fucking evil, but that's what positive law is. That's what we have, right? We're making the case that if you use natural law for your particular people you will you will drive your speciation in a positive fashion like uh, yeah you got you got to the you, end point defined by you and your people right because your values become encoded in the intuition and the institutions and the intuitions so the problem that people have is they tend to favor one of these three positions and the constant, the uh, the Christian constitutionalist, right, which we think of as the the uh, classical liberal American, the traditional American, is all three. It's Christian ethics, uh, uh, natural law, and the procedures established by the Constitution. They understand that legislative process. What they don't understand is the court's fucking job. And the court's job is to say. If it's not in the Constitution, right? Right? There's if it's if it excuse me, the the, the only the there's excuse me, the unstated law in the Constitution is its natural law. 
they tried to express natural law by enumerating rights. They didn't enumerate enough of them completely enough. They've set out the procedure and they assumed Christian ethics. Yep. So, so we're sitting here and uh, we have a population that thinks the court is to adjudicate morally their way or procedurally, the, or procedurally whatever they can get away with. But both of these are scams, right? Yes. The, right the, the court's job is to say, is it decidable under natural law? In other words, if it's right, is can I prove that by the history of the decisions that have been made? In other words, by the preponderance of the historical evidence. And this is what they mean by traditional law. So did, did, did the common law already solve this? And, and, and in other words, the people have a reasonable expectation that it'll continue. And then there's people who say, I don't care about any of that. I just want it my way. And I want to, of course, cause legislation from, from the top down, children. legislation from the bench. There are children who say that. Yeah, well, there are children who say that. Okay, that's really the problem. It's an adulting problem. I don't feel like I'm getting this as organized. Well, I thought I mean, it was pretty good. What? I thought it was pretty good. So, uh, so the problem. So, if you're the court, all Brandon jumped. See, Brandon jumped to two. Well, first Brad jumped to one. Then Brandon jumped to two conclusions. Where right did I, we see patterns? That's all. <laughs> so, so the, the 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 conclusion I'm trying to make is the court is trying to decide. Remember decide it's not choose the court if it's choice that's if they're not delivering the choice the to people. you if they're not delivering the choice to you they're not doing their job that's correct if it's a choice it's up to you the court can only decide right so if the court looks at it and says the cut look it there's this thing called the common law, which is the evidence of the resolution of human disputes over time, right? the su successful resolution of disputes over time. They, 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 what they're looking for is what has become settled law. In other words, tradition, reasonable expectation. Then they said, what is, because uh, it's that tradition isn't arbitrary. The resolution of disputes isn't theoretical. It's empirical. And it, the, because we decide disputes by demonstrating resolution of definite, we do by tort, demonstrating interest. So the court is saying, is it, is it in the Constitution, right? Did you follow the procedure in the Constitution? Does, is this gu uh, guaranteed by the Constitution? In other words, the rights, the procedure and the rights. And after that, is it the common law? If it's not the common law, it's a natural law, right? The, it's just a really simple set of questions. All the court is doing is saying the 60s got out of hand with this positive law shit and it led to unsettled law. Abortion resulted in unsettled law. In other words, it means people conflict. disagreed. It means conflict in your polity. It conflict rather than ended conflict. So the court is saying that's unsettled law. It was even fucking... Ginsburg, Doolittle is going to quote Ginsburg. Are you kidding? What the it. hell? Hell is going to freeze over. But even Ginsburg said that was bad law. Right. So, any chance, was, what? any chance they're going to continue the Civil Rights Act? It looks to me was, like the 20th century's uh, the bad decisions of the 20th century are slowly being unraveled at the edge. Yeah. Backwards, well, you know, because we, none of them are, are, are affordable. Right. They're all the, what happened was the post-war, because we, we're masters of repeating this over and over again. The post-war uh, introduction, migration of the Frankfurt School, which is neo-Marxism, post-modernism, came to the United States to try to get, create Jewish legal positivism, right, ruled by judges or in their case, rabbis, right? But the French did the same thing because they got it from the church. We're trying to not do that because we're good Germans and Anglos because we're Germanic, right? So they came here and they intentionally undermined everything. They've undermined the family. 
They've undermined our uh, our law. They've undermined our institutions. They've undermined our financial system. They've undermined our culture. They've undermined our history. They've undermined our values. They did it on purpose by starting with the academy to create educators and educators to create generations. Right? They then put create a credentialed class that took this uh, war against our institutional uh, production and put them throughout the the uh, the government because that's where you go to lead schools first get the government job, and then uh, they have they use that power to impose it on the public for the education and now they're squeezing the middle which is business and industry in between them with their lies. But what happened by 1980? Because, excuse me, what happened by uh, the 1950s was we falsified communism, certainly by the 60s. In the 60s, they uh, switched over to neo Marxism, right? And then uh, what happened was we, by the 1980s, we falsified all the statements about human behavior, in other words, all the pretenses of equality. We had about we we got the IQ thing first, which was really offensive. Steve Saylor still worked on it, he was just human. Makes me laugh every time you put something out. So, because people are having to get on board with it, right? But we had when Steven Pinker came out in the blank slate, he eradicated the big slate in 1999, right? I always use 2000, but I think he published in 1999. By 2012, we had sex differences down, right? Uh, by 2017, we had race differences down, right? Once we had sex and race differences down, we had class differences down. Although Fussell published that, I don't remember, in the 90s, I think. Money in the names. So if you look at this spectrum, we've slowly falsified all the academic fallacies, right? They put out there. I'm trying to work on the fucking shit that happened in math and logic, right? I mean, that's what I'm trying to do in philosophy. So we've falsified all this, but now what's happening is it's working its way up into government. Right. We're having to falsify the claims that they made about government. Well, it's one thing to, to falsify, you know, some metric in the physical sciences like genetics or uh, neur neur uh, neurology. It's another thing to s falsify stuff that's heavily morally loaded that I have uh, a, a moral interest in. Right. And so they're going to they're fighting this the hardest. But, you know, as you said, they were, uh, were working. We've been falsifying the 50s to the to the 80s. We've been falsifying from the 80s to the 2020s, and it's still taken some time to get there. What's the matter, Brad? You want to throw? Something no, no, that's it's, that's what it is. We're 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 just undoing the errors backwards in time sequentially to undo the errors of the 20th century. Not errors, deceits. Oh, okay, the lies. Deceits, okay, the lies. Know. Yes, yes. Martin is all over this, by the way. I've been watching him play this. Sorry, Martin. He's, he's all over it. I love that Martin's gone from sort of benevolently neutral to aggressive to aggressive. I kind of find that charming. Without, um, without seeking justice from the criminals, people will be the externality. It's the people who follow their lead. So if, you, if you don't get the justice for the people who are at the top, then there okay, that, that, more, you, you, there's, you, there's you, more that, collateral damage. You're not, you gotta, you gotta explain that because I, I could interpret that three or four ways. I'm sure what you mean. We mean justice. You mean retaliation? Or do you yeah. mean? Well, I mean, you could call it a retaliation, but it would be, Honestly? has to be, cal it has to be calculated. Well, if it's, thing is, if it's not calculated, it won't be measured. Meaning people will just do it okay. haphazardly. What, what, what is not calculated? The, the, the retaliation to what the people who have done this on purpose yes. has, have done. If, if you don't, if there's not someone's to blame, because there is, and they're yes. not put on trial and held to the extent of their crimes and punished for them, there will be more externality than otherwise. That is, that is the- In other words, we need a Nuremberg trial for- 2.0, that's 10 the, times the size. Yes. Except the crimes are real. And the crimes are real this time. Is that the is that the motto, the tagline there? Martin? <laughs> okay. I caught so, that I caught that quite except. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you caught that, huh? Um uh okay, so I didn't expect that coming out of you, Brandon. That was just through that just threw me. Um uh, so so okay, so uh 
to t I agree with that, by the way, which is why I mean, the, the court, what, what we just discussed was the timeline of the court, like ret returning things to normal. Brad discussed the unwinding. It's too slow. It's too slow. We're going to lose so many people on this slow ride to getting things right. And that may be good for some people, but give the people who live a choice. Give the people who were abused a choice. You want to shed your chains? Here's your answer. You know, that's a that would be an interesting political party position. So, so here's the thing: is that uh, I've worked with Dr. Brad, or Brad, Dr. Brad has worked on me to convert huh. this from a prosecution to a science. Yep, and you guys got there. Yeah, but but we still need the prosecution. <laughs> we don't have to. No one has to be mad about it. It's not angry. They're disciplining animals for doing what they do, but they require discipline, and some of them require justice. You know, it's it's actually an interesting um, the position that you want to uh, have in, uh, in the Nuremberg 2.0 for the PC woke deal Marxist Marxist movement has got is a great political frame um to, because it's not a it's not a competition it's a threat and um it, it's very hard for someone to address it without addressing the threat because it's real life that's what i'm trying to convince people this is not a game we play on social media we do social science this is fun for us but the results of what we're this is real yeah, yeah. your life is at stake here okay. across the boards okay so so i'm going to show I'm going to stick that on the shelf here because I want to talk about that after I finish my go for it dis my discovery here. So we talked about the the three types of uh, criteria for the law, right? Whether it's intuitionistic, whether it's natural law, which is neutral, and whether it was procedurally followed. Um, uh, we talked about how they we have been falsifying this whole series ended up. Um, uh, we talked about how these people are to blame. That's great. Um, uh, however, I, I take a great comfort in no longer worrying about that. But I'm, in other words, my, my quality of life is better by not being angry anymore. But I can see how the, your excuse me, the the last thing is you brought up, Brandon, was that is that the um, is this the fact that the evidence of what we're saying by saying the natural law to this whole sequence, the American model, Christian ethics, natural law, uh, procedure, it does two things. It it maximizes individual responsibility, whether you are a poor peasant who can only do, who can't, can only avert doing bad, you know, think of it as a Christian peasant, or you're a monarch, which is a Christian, which is means the, Catholic, the Catholic church has approved, has uh, validated your standing as a Christian capable of adjudicating the law to Christians. So this whole spectrum is covered. So uh, what is not clear is the evolutionary consequences and the condition, excuse me, the condition of your people and the evolutionary consequences of what we're saying. Because what we're doing is this is, this is push maximizing responsibility for every individual of the polity, whether you're the lowly Christian peasant whose only responsibility is self-care and doing no wrong because you have no power to, to do anything else. Or the monarch, which is you do no wrong despite that you have the power to do everything else. So we're maximizing responsibility. What does maximizing responsibility do? It suppresses irresponsibility because that's what responsibility is, right? Is responsibility? I use, I use accountability. Yeah. Because. Well, yeah. Okay. So I am responsible. If I am responsible, I take responsibility, and because, but I and someone else holds me accountable. Those are two different. You're, you're accountable if you're open to the consequence of your actions, and what, what the problem is a lot of people aren't open to the consequence of their actions. Yeah, it's uh, demonstrated. It's protected in the law, and so on. So I, I use the differentiation just 
you can take putting these people no, through this, trials I, is taking, I, I, is taking I, I, accountability for their actions. I'm just trying to disambiguate account, responsible and accountable. And like many things, responsibility is I am, right? I do. And yes. accountable is others do to me, right? And so, uh, so uh, I'm just trying to disambiguate between those two. Uh, I'm going to, you know, in other words, I can be respond. I can be responsible for myself, independent of any others. But I can't be held accountable for anything on a desert island, right? Uh, you know, I can only be responsible for myself, right? Uh, because that's something I can do. But on a desert island, there's nobody holding me accountable. If I'm accountable, that means it's, there's somebody's holding well, me accountable. Nature, for nature, will, nature holds you accountable on a desert island. Well, nature is that's an anthropomorphization. So, all right, I'll go. Con I've got, consequences, I've, consequences, well, consequences. That that's yes, the yes, that's yes. the other side of a, a, accountability. Right. So accountability. So you know, is, actual, accountability yeah. is a human thing. Uh, consequences are 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 not are are, are, are don't require others. You are responsible for the action and the consequences. Yeah, on an other island, people hold you accountable is, for the actions and the consequences. On an oh. island, nobody is insuring you from the consequences. That's the yep. difference. Yes. Right. Say that again. That on an island, nobody is insuring you from the consequences. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well done. We're, what, I'm, what I'm saying is, we're not holding people accountable. Correct. The, the missing step here. Yes, yes. It's the and it's external. Yeah, but but, but we, let's finish. Let's finish. And so, we are ensuring them from the consequences. So, so the insight we have is that the female group strategy was created, was female strategy, was adopted as a group strategy. That group strategy was knowingly, knowingly and unknowingly applied, right? to create a political movement to undermine our movement. Now, um, people are responsible by tort whether they did it impossible, possible, and they're responsible by crime if they did it on purpose. We, can, we see the evidence of the crime of intent, and we see the evidence of the, of, of the, uh, of the tort of regardless of intent. All, all of those who have committed the torts, if I could, they can't be held accountable because they don't have it to restitute, right? You have to go after the people who have it. All these people who have been twisted to use their intuitions to undermine- you desperately to, to not go there? And you are dragging me there with extraordinary facility. Um, working at it. <laughs> <laughs> I've just tried to get through the fact that um, that we it's not a evolution isn't a moral choice it's an empirical observation the rate of adaptation isn't a moral opinion it's an empirical observation yes response what we call responsibility or agency or accountability in other words, whether you're able to do it you do do it and we hold you accountable for it. agency responsibility accountability whether you're able to do it whether you do do it and whether you, uh, we hold you to do, to accountable for doing it. Uh, 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 that is what our, our civilization does. Why? Because it increases the rate of evolutionary computation of everybody in the polity and directs their, and prevents them from uh, socializing losses and privatizing conflict. Right. And therefore, the, what we do by creating the commons we do is we reduce the costs of everybody living so that they have a higher quality of life because they're not fighting irreciprocity. They're only seeking opportunities for reciprocity. Is that, yes. Did I make that clear enough? Yes. Right. So this isn't an opinion. This isn't moralizing. This mm -hmm. is physics. It's a judgment. It's a judgment Just about reality. Physics, right? It's not an opinion. There aren't ways around it, right? Now you could say this is a truth. If you have an average IQ in your population of 115, right? The smart fraction, in other words, the number of people above 125, but especially those over 140, are going to innovate faster than your population of an IQ of 85, right? 
Now, if you took that population of 85 and took out those people at the bottom, so their IQ was 85, they'd innovate fast. Why? Because people at the bottom are a drag. Yeah, but we teach the science of measuring people as drag. No. We know How do you know if you're positive or not? Are you saying that a guy with an 85 IQ is drag? No. He can only demonstrate his drag. Right? We can't tell. He could have an 80 IQ and be, you know, the, the best painter we have. You know what I mean? Because it's just a matter of conscientiousness and effort. Right? So that's great. You could have uh, guys, you know, uh, there's, I know a couple of guys that have IQs in the 170s and they're absolutely fucking useless, right? Because all they want to do is talk about, you know, silly nonsense all the time, right? Like, especially weird stuff like science fiction and video games and anything that doesn't have, require them to integrate with, socialize with, and adapt to normies. Right, right. So, Probably so painful. What? I, it's I painful can, for them. I can sympathize with that. <laughs> <laughs> we don't all fit in, all right. <laughs> so, so, so the answer is here is that what our civilization is designed to do is exactly what it's done. Our American Constitution didn't invent anything; it just wrote it down. What did the innovation? The common law. Why did the common law do it? Because the only way to organize people in this kind of geography, when you can't centralize power, right? And when most of the men are capable of farming and warriors, and you don't have a huge underclass. So, I mean, we built our pirate ancestors, whether they're land. I just think it's so funny thinking about guys in these yurts on carts wearing pirate hats and eye patches, yeah. right? I mean, th but that's what they are, right? I mean, that's what step herders were. They were pirates, right? Well, why was it, why did we have uh, the Athenians and why did we have the sea, pe me, sea people? Why do we have the Athenians? Why did we have the Vikings? Why do we have the English? Because piracy is hella fun, but it requires democracy. And what's democracy? It's rule of law, it's the natural law. So you're going to get evolutionary velocity out of this system. So you, it's not like you have a choice. You, you, we have a choice. It's not like it's a preference. You get anything other than the farther you deviate from what we're describing, which is Christian ethics, the optimum means forgiving everything. Basically. It's the optimum means the prisoner's dilemma. Uh, uh, natural law, which is the optimum means of cooperation. A procedure which prevents authority, right? And requires, requires that law be settled because it is common amongst all people. And if it is not common, it may not be settled by a higher authority. It must only be settled by a local authority. That local authority may have to just be you. <laughs> many, many, most, and usually <laughs> just you. <laughs> just you. Um, and, and there's this, uh, the, uh, a, a, a sovereign man is his own legislature. Now we don't use that term anymore, but it used to be something you knew. What is a sovereign man? It means the legislature. I'm my own legislature, i.e., my own state. What is out? What is a, a, an outlaw mean? It means you're outside the law. What is the outlaw? What is outside the law mean? You're outside of, of the insurance, the reciprocal insurance of uh, other men of, who are insured. Self determination, each other. yeah, for yourself. You're right. Yeah. So you're that's outside of the that protection of the lunch. law. You're outside of the protection of the law, which is us. That's us, right? They're, the people, the sovereigns, the, the self-determined. Sovereign. They get to decide if they're going to treat you unlawfully. That's what outlaw means. That's it. That's it. It's like there's reciprocal insurance communities of yeah. increasing scale. That's all. With, and that's why there's with, such with, a prohibition with, on authority. With decreasing commonality of law right. at scale. Yes. Because that's what will happen, right? Like the sciences, laws will over time, all the other things considered, if people have sovereignty, laws over time will eventually coalesce with the differences being basically taste, festivals, dress, you know, food, types of food, you know, things, you know, storytelling nonsense like that. 
right? So what went wrong was that this group brought in the female strategy behavior and our law had been codified as the common law under agrarianism quite thoroughly to control women. But, this, but what happened was when we invented in rapid sequence, the agrarian revolution, the, the age of sale, right? The age of sale, the agrarian revolution, the commercial revolution, the financial revolution, the industrial, the industrial revolution. What happened was all those states went through reforms. The British did, the French did, all the German polities did, the Russians did, the Ashkenazi did, and it even started working its way around the rest of the world. So all that went through. But what didn't happen is because far agrarianism and uh, uh, sale, agrarianism, forget, going to forget them, uh, uh, com the commercial revolution, the financial revolution, and the industrial revolution, because those are all primarily male scales, right? Yeah. Well, you, the, the law suppressed the feminine instinct at scale because it doesn't scale, right? That's what Correct. the law did through time. Until you get Roman roads and writing, or until you get uh, Roman roads and Greek writing, or until you get uh, cheap publishing, radio, television, and mass media, whose primary audience isn't men in productivity, which is what early, which look at the print, the books that were printed. They're mostly help how to do stuff. Right? But the, what happened was after the, uh, after the Marxist revolution is it, it says, how do we use the female? How do we scale this now with mass printing? Uh, 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 now that we have the ability to be customers, right? right? Tell them that their instincts are moral goods. And so well, what happened was, is what you just said. Yeah, over and but, over and but over. But we pander to women, right? We, the problem I have is I still don't know why we pander to women. We should only pander to children, only when it's necessary. The rest of us need to be adults. So, so the, did, the problem did, is did we, we do that a hundred years ago, Tal. Say that again, Martin. Did we do that a hundred years ago? I don't think we could. Well, we were talking about the law emerging. It emerged because the environmental pressures forced it to. And so we got a constitution, but we did in that constitution, it addressed the problems of scale. Yes. But it hadn't yet encountered the problem. I mean, they talked about freedom of speech, right? But they hadn't, they hadn't had anything on. It was before uh, the industrialization of time. I mean, right. So what happens with Marxism, the female intuition of Marxism, Marxism is they institutionalized the second generation of line. Yes, but even even the idea of free speech got reinterpreted. They didn't mean that you can say whatever you want without consequences. They only meant that you couldn't be prevented from saying it. Yes, the current definition of free speech is communist in origin. Yes, which just but, proves there's holes in that constitution that everyone loves so much that need plugging. Yeah, you they, they didn't thing. define it as precisely as they should have. Right, but but I mean, uh, you know, I, if you, I'm forgiving. It's easy. It's a lot. It's pretty easy to forgive people in the past. There was no not, way they were going to do it then. It was impossible. Well, yeah, they, well, they, they had no idea what's coming. They have no idea. Well, right. they were okay. So here's how I look at the past when I criticize people. Are they directionally correct? Yes. Right. They were. So yes, they were. Is 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 when. Uh, when uh, Aristotle and uh, Epicurus are talking about gravity, they're not dire they're directionally correct. I mean, they're, it's actually uh, uh, it's uh, Epicurus, Epicurus, maybe. Yeah, yeah. So I, 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 I was like, I didn't, it didn't come out of my mouth. I said, but I, but I was thinking about back in my head. Uh, Martin's going to bring up Aristotle was full of shit and Epicurus was close, right? And I, I'm like, I didn't say it, but because I was going to get joy out of you saying it, so. <laughs> So uh, yeah, Aristotle is great on various subjects like politics and ethics, but his physics are horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where he worked, he sees patterns at human scale. 
Yes. So, Humans, so, yeah. so, but is Newton directionally correct? Yes. Yes. Is Einstein directionally correct? He's directionally correct. He's even wronger, wronger than Newton was, but we can't figure out why yet. So these are, so to my, what I look at is directionally correct, right? When I look at, say, the, the, uh, the Chinese model, it looks directionally close. When I look at the Middle Eastern model, it's directionally horrible. So, what, so when you look at, when I look at the female model, it's directionally horrible. It was only during our work together and my work on lying that I understood that the male and female methods, in other words, all these methods of, that I call sophistry, et cetera, they're just the male method of lying. Or systemic lying rather by overload, overloading reason versus overloading emotion, which is the female method of lying. So we, they just did so our ancestors were directionally correct, but they weren't as, you know, uh, they, they weren't as precise as Einstein was to do. And so they were directionally correct. But if you go back to the common law, it's all in there. It's, it's all in there. It's in there in the fucking 10th century. I mean, technically speaking, technically speaking, you know, when they talk about the common law in English history, they mean uh, uh, they mean after 1066. But when I talk about the common law, I mean in the Roman terms, which is common settled law among the European people over, despite their, uh, despite very vari local variations. What is what is held in common? Yeah, the term common in our king's domains. Say again? The term in British, uh, in English sense meant common in our king's domains. Yes. He says very smart things. Have you noticed that? It does mm. happen. So, um, uh, so the, the, what is the point here? So the problem is we know what the problem is, right? We just, and it's not like it's, we were talking earlier about the manosphere getting there and so on. Yep. They're getting there because they're articulating the problems with nuance, but they no one has solutions still. Yes. Well, well just, I actually we're think forwarding people to meet in the middle. It's like there's one solution. It's one law. It's got five criteria, like abide or <laughs> <laughs> They provide solutions for individuals. Yes, that's better framing. Smart, smart. Thank just you. Just like therapy. Yes. No, so they actually can give you advice how to have a better life under these conditions. Yes, but they're teaching you to adapt to maladaptive conditions. It's not yeah. good in the long run for any of us. The checkout, the checking out. So very few people believe we can organize as a group. No, I, I don't think that's uh, that's uh, those. I don't think the statements are contradictory. Um, no, they're not. But, yeah, th those statements are contradictory. The, the problem is, it's men checking out is working. I mean, the it's actually working. Um, oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's bringing people to the table, but it, it's we can get uh, that. It's fast. working because it's working its way through the chicks, and they don't like it very much. You know, you see, like this is you see how much how many of them every single day say this is. This is hopeless. What happened? What happened is you got what you asked for. Yeah, I'll, I'll say it. Tell them blue in the face. We're leaving people behind. We don't got it. They're yeah. leaving themselves behind. We have answers. Go ahead, Martin. Well, somebody else told them that that's what they should be asking for. They yes. didn't come up with it. They did right. not. That's right. That's the problem with. Okay, so so uh, so we are faced with this problem then of saying we know we i want to i want to say that they are faced with it <laughs> our people are faced with the problem of of the fact that um the harm done by this uh set of false promises this uh, this invent this new institution of lying by false promises that bait people in the hazard and destroyed reproduction, the civilization, the culture, our arts, everything. Destroy your intuitions. So, uh, so, so when we say all that, that's that's great. But I mean, we still have the problem of 
when you say, I want to fix this issue, you lay out what to fix it. That's great. We just talk about lying. But the minute you have to explain what happened, it's really offensive. <laughs> um, and so, uh, so uh, uh, the question has always been, how do we handle this issue? Uh, Brad's advice to me, which you know, I thought of quite, I thought quite a bit about because uh, he's very persistent, and I'm very stubborn and thick-headed, is that uh, I should just focus on the on the on just say this is the whole, this is what happened. The other half is to put together a prosecution, which is to say, this is what happened. This is why it happened. This is who accountable. And if we, if we want to prevent it, we have to uh, demand restitution. Uh, so the, the, difference, the difference is that's actionable. I want the people to ask for it. They should ask you for it. You jumped ahead again, so go ahead. What does that mean? I want the people to ask for the equilibration that you just laid out. You shouldn't have to do it. It's not your opinion. It's not an opinion. It should be the popular opinion because it's better for everyone and those who say it's not are criminals, literally. I don't know what to tell people other than that. Well, you're you're, you're going to get the natural law or worse. And right now you don't have it, so you're getting worse. Right. My, my, my take would be that um, you you finish the science and then make a separate book on the prosecution. If necessary, because I'm going to get the public to beat you to that second book. <laughs> I actually think the second book is just a paper. Well, I, have to to work, I just have to work faster then. There you go. It's a good race. I like a competitive environment. I do too. It's fun. Okay. So I end, so the problem, I think we painted, I was trying to say, can I summarize all this, but it's too much stuff. Um, uh, the people don't understand the court's job. The court's job is to decide. And it's court's job is to, oh, here's why I was, that's what I know is, I, I said, I'm forgetting a little bit. Um, the court's job is to decide. The court's job is to decide because the court's job is to produce settled law, right? Is to, not, does it mean compose it? No, it means state it settled, is codify it settled. And so when something is settled and you try to unsettle it, the court will decide against it. When something isn't settled, right? Uh, excuse me, when, the, when something is settled, and you try to unsettle it, the court will reject it. When something is, uh, is settled and the court may codify it. In other words, it may na narrow it so that it's... And, in, and, if, the, and if, the, if it is so settled, codified, and if it is, neat, if it is uh, unsettled that will, they will, and it's undecidable, they will send it back to you because it's not the court's job to legislate. It's, right, it's the legislature's job to assist in the produce of com production of commons, but it's the people who are supposed to adapt. And so what this is, is a cycle of adaptation through the assignment of responsibility so that everybody has to adapt to what is held in common. Not to what's held on, not in common, but to what's held in common. So the court's doing its duty. The court wasn't doing its duty. Scalia tried to explain this. He did a pretty poor job, honestly, um, and uh, which is amazing given his ability. Um, uh, but uh, we've explained it, right? We've written, we've expo explained what's the deal. So. Uh, I'm just surprised that fucking uh, Thomas has turned out to be the net, the, the Scalia 2.0. I mean, he's he's even more precise than Scalia. All Scalia was saying is is that a, that a, a term is a weight and measure at the time it was a term or a phrase or a sentence. 
their weights and measure at the time of their writing. So just like if I wrote down 299 in 1830 and 299 today, the purchasing power of 299 in 1830 and 299 today is very, very different. So the term is a measure of as a weighted measure of its time, and so if you if you try to say that the term has a modern meaning, it you have to say well what is it weighing and measuring, right? right? And, and and is that weight what are, is weighting and measuring covered by the same weight and measure that was been done before? And no, you don't get to use the language to override human action, behavior. Now, this guy's come out and said the specifics is, this set of excuses made under the law, right, but by which, which is due process. Right? All right, that's basically legal positivism and that's not law. I mean, that's fucking outrageously great, right? Yeah, okay, nailed it. I just love it, right? That's not law. That's not settled law. That's not codifying settled law. That's not returning a choice to the people. Right? That's trying to make law. And the court may not make law because only the people may make law. And so the, the, the fact that our people want everybody to, they're so spoiled that they want everybody to think like them. They give an end. When especially thinking like that means irresponsibly, right? That which means anti-evolutionarily, because it means not adaptively, not in common, then that's the antithesis of what our law, our government, and our court exists to do. So we, like, we, we tell people that they have the rights to subvert our culture. Yes. We tell them. We raise no, them to believe no, we don't that. tell. They're they are um, usurping that uh, authority, and we are we are not um, punishing them for it. Oh right. yeah, we're by, not by teaching them that it's their right to subvert the culture. They get to uh, they get to push back against being held accountable. So if they created to, they retaliate against accountability. Accountability created, turned Jewish separatism into activism, right? And activism to undermining, and undermining as a as as um, anti-white, right? And anti-whiteness, which is just it doesn't have to do with race; it has to do with white. Which they posit as failure, a, they posit a as a duty. Anti-whiteness as a duty. Yeah, but it's a question. failure. It's a failure of the insur social civil insurance to uh, be right. right. We yes. failed to defend against it because. We because those very errors we talked about, we we didn't say free, truthful, reciprocal speech. When I, I wrote it this morning, what is free, truthful, reciprocal speech within the limits of viewpoint neutrality, which is reciprocity, right? So if if you don't have free, truthful, and reciprocal speech, I realize that's redundant, right? But I have to say that because, I mean, truthful, reciprocal. Let's see. Uh, truthful reciprocal under viewpoint viewpoint neutrality is just saying reciprocal. <laughs> it, makes, it makes the recursion explicit. Yes, but it makes it more explicit. Yeah. So, uh, so where was I going with that? Oh, since we didn't have that definition, and at the time, I mean, you know, there were so many things against lying in our culture. I mean, I, I would say that the the uh, the you know the Eskimos twenty seven words for snow. The British have twenty seven words for calling you an idiot. Now we have uh, twenty seven means of ensuring we're not lying. Right? I mean, there's just so much truth embedded in our culture. Right? It's what makes it a high trust culture. It was so indoctrinated into all of us as kids that you told the truth no matter what. Right? Which was not fun because that means daddy spanks you or something. Um, they tell the truth no matter what, and that they uh, they circumvented this and made it possible because they couldn't really conceive of it. They couldn't conceive of the church going away. No, they couldn't conceive of the industrialization of lying. They were thought they were more worried that people would write evil and publish evil works. 
but they said, well, I'd rather have people uh, us defeat evil works. The problem is you could it's it's hard to do that. It's okay to do that with a town crier. It gets a little bit harder with a book, and it gets fucking impossible with mass media, movies, television, and, and uh, mass media. We I mean, just can't. You can't defeat it without having a without creating a market to defeat it, which is you have to create a means by which to suppress it. So we just for, failed to create a market for this pressure of irreciprocity in the form of truthful reciprocity. Uh, uh, again, that's not what free speech meant. There used to be laws against obscenity and well, right, laws, uh, I guess so. Obscenity, fighting words, libel, slander, repeated harassment, unlawful contract, true threat, hazard, uh, I added hazard, incitement, time, place, manner, special and private places and form. So there's this huge spectrum of places you don't, you don't have free speech, right? The point of free speech is really that it matters to the public and matters public. In other words, speech in public to the public and matters public with political consequences needed to be free in order to, in order to, uh, for a, to prevent the rise of what had happened elsewhere. So like many things, uh, the left loves to reduce something to a single word and then change the definition. And so what we do is we do the opposite is we create series because it's no longer possible to do that. And we make what the left does a crime. Let me make what they do with them. All right, boy. Okay, so I got, I got way, I did way more than I wanted to that with that. I don't, was that did that make most of that make sense? Okay, so so the, the let's let's now let's revisit let's revisit this issue of criminality because you got to understand, Brett. I'm a much happier person. Now that Brad has used a rug beater, you know what a rug beater is? You put the take the rug outside, you hang it over the line, and you just beat the rug oh, until yeah. all the dust is out of it. And you got a hell of beat that rug. I don't know if you ever did it, but you know, today we have like you take your Persian, I got a fancy Persian carpet, carpet somewhere in storage. Take your Persian carpet, you know, you, you pour soap on it, this fancy soap on it, you spray it down, you run the scrubber machine over it yeah. right and then you flood it so it all drains in the drain and take it over the line and you dry it out right you dry your fancy mine's like cost like fifteen thousand dollars those are really expensive it's red anyway so i'm sorry I, I i'm a little hung up on what i paid for that apologize it's probably still in my wife's garage so i'm gonna eat my moths anyway uh sorry so so, but in the old days, you would wash it down, you would beat it and then rinse it, right? Well, that, so the, I'm the rug and Brad's like the housekeeper whacking that rug all day long as if she's getting back at her boyfriend. Yeah. Was that a colorful enough? Right, so I'm kind of beat up on the, on, on the prosecution side. You know, Brad, I'm, I'm telling the story just to give you a window of opportunity and you're not taking it. And I feel kind of let down. Oh, I'm sorry. It could be a disappointment. You're doing fine work. Anyway, so let's talk about prosecution. Now, I would say I would like to come out with a book on the law and just have it, be, right? I would then like to, I, I would like, I would then like to write a paper because it's really, 40 pages yeah, of prosecution. And you publish that as an academic paper. That might make its way into a book or something. I don't care. Yeah. I don't want to write another book out. And so uh, what, why do we want to prosecute them? And how would we prosecute them? Because for my view, I would say, start a political party for the purpose of conducting uh, Nuremberg 2.0. Sure. That would be motivating because it's like the people want prosecutions. The it's people just want to go. 
Well, it's like this. It's like the people are are are, are hungry for justice, and they're certainly convinced that all the institutions are not being uh, responsive to their interests. And so they will be uh, very pleased to, to get uh, a contract for uh, justice. None of this is, this isn't contentious as far as I can tell. Like Scott Adams and Eric Weinstein say every institution is broken. That's enough consensus across. Thinkers. Well, it's one thing to say that. It's another to say my my aunt Matilda works in the Department of Education. She's going to get fired, and it's possible she gets prosecuted because she's a she's a credentialed, well-meaning fool. The the prosecution on regular people will be lighter than the consequences they have coming for playing on the enemy's team, like without their knowledge. Right. Because the people right are take it out on you. They're going to take it out on you. Well, I sense Eric Weinstein might have a bit more conflict of interest here. They all have conflicts of interest. All of them work inside of a particular institution or two or three. It doesn't mean that they all don't need to face reforms. They all need to face reforms. They've brought you the present that exists. It's not much of a present. We'd like to return it. Okay, so... So you come out with this. I like that because it's attention getting. And it doesn't require me to get two million guys to show up and light shit on fire, which I really don't feel like doing right now. Yes, it avoids all that. What was that laughter for? I mean, I, I did try to get a laugh out of it. What is? I'm, I try to frame it as like. We're protecting you from the animals who won't know better but to eat you when things get bad. Because you direct those animals now to eat the people who are necessary to eat instead of those in so, their proximity. You know, you know, they are you know, squeezed. You know how we um, didn't pay the money to send the slaves back? Yes, I do know that. And that's, look at what that's cost us. Um, when it, what that would have been, been the right answer. Right? So what about just retiring all these government idiots? That would be my... Eating the yes. Yep. Yeah. Go home. Yeah, you then, can then even it. keep most of your assets. We want to start at the top, and the rest it's of them. Not even that much money. Nope. Go home. Go ahead. Tend to your family. Uh, it's necessary. It um, it avoids a great deal of uh, heel dragging. Yes. And it and it also um, it unwinds a lot of the lies of the 20th century, which have to do with promises made that cannot be kept that were illegitimate in the first place. So a bunch of people think they're gonna get something that inflation is gonna wash away that, that was undeserved. Yeah. And, and it was not legitimate. I was doing the math on this and I talked to Kurt about it this weekend, which was the, uh, I bought my $5 and 10 cent gasoline. And um, I did the math on it with a patient, which is if I paid 1963 silver coin, how much is a gallon of gas worth? 33 cents. Yeah which is the same price that my dad paid when I was born in 1963, commercial, 35 cents a gallon. There you have it. I remember 25 cent gas, and I remember filling up my mini bike, and I don't think it was 50 cents. Now holds $10, baby. <laughs> in my be my 11 year old or 10 year old self on my four horsepower mini bike that I'd frequently wrap around a tree with me in it. Um, uh, Sorry for the distraction. No, uh, I, I think it's, it's interesting because I didn't, I didn't respect this reaction. Mm -hmm. what, what do you mean? Oh. Oh well, I don't. No, no I think the I don't public. Peddle, I don't. Peddle so Brad, is your basic argument just that the two things need to be separate? Yeah, I think that the science is independent. I don't. I don't. I don't peddle. Uh, you, said, you make the science uh, independent. The prosecution is. I like it as a separate paper because then it's like it's it's a decidable function that you're bringing to bear after the science has come out, and it's just using the science. Okay. The, the science is context independent. 
That's correct. Persecution isn't. Yes. Right. So it's an application of the science to the present circumstance. And it's like, okay, it's the hammer that's waiting for the, that, that needs an anvil. And so you provide the anvil first because nobody knows what exactly that means. Right. And you separate them. That's okay. I like this. This was interesting. I got a lot out of that. Um, can I, can I switch to problem number two? Oh, is that okay? Yes. Are you still on board? I'm not using up anybody's. Okay. Uh, one of the things we do when we enumerate series is we make really obvious things that are missing. So if we talk about the institutions of cooperation, association, cooperation, production, reproduction, commons, polities, and war. Those are marketplaces. Isn't that interesting? So is what is the purpose, so excuse me. So what is the purpose of the law? To adjudicate differences between those marketplaces while keeping them intact and compatible. Here we go. So what marketplace is currently under assault by a misunderstanding of the law? All of them. <laughs> so, exactly. All right. Now let's talk about the family. This is an interesting problem because throughout most of history, you couldn't survive without one. Right? Uh, you couldn't survive without a family. The family probably couldn't survive without a clan or a tribe, at least very easily. So what's happened today is that we think we're wealthy enough to survive without a family, a clan or a tribe. But then you're not producing any offspring. And if you're not producing any offspring, you're just dead weight. So the question is, uh, I did my job. And I, I, I don't have suffer from whatever this testosterone or sperm count problem is. So I'm happy to help as many reasonably attractive volunteers as, as uh, needed. As long as you want a super nerdy kid with, and you have a Scandinavian genetics, I see, that seems to work out well for me. Anyway. Um, Sorry, I just thought I'd insert that humor in there. See what if I get some reaction out of that. Um, so the, uh, the the what's happened is they just by destroying the market, the intersexual market for reproduction, by reducing it first to friendship, and now just to sex. Well, that's what's happened. We took it from an economic necessity uh, in, in prior to the seventies to friendship in the 70s, to sex. And the, and the, to to wait, non-reproductive sex. Mating to, date, mating to dating. Yes. That's, yeah. And so what's happened is we're having a population collapse. Now, it'd be one thing if it was a population collapse that um, was, uh, was, was, uh, was stabilizing or gradual. But it's not okay if it's a fucking collapse, which, and it's, and while they say we're not having one, it's due to South American immigration. It's not due to American rates of reproduction. Whereas Germany, uh, you know, Germany's falling off a cliff. And somebody posted something in one of Martin's uh, feeds the other day uh, that showed that uh, showed. What happened to Germany during the during the uh, COVID? What's weird is you'd expect it to go up, and it crashed hard. Well, yes. well the assumption there was that vaccinations had something to do with it. There's not a way that they didn't. But people people were also isolated, and it, it was hard. It was hard on them as well. I I didn't expect to see a rise in children. I expected to see a crash, whether it was 
brought about by medication or sed like actual sedation of humans. So, so we we need to have kids. I, I, I view this as the law brings back compatibility and compatibility to live prison children. You're so good. You always get right and go right to the end of it. <laughs> well, <laughs> let me, maybe let me. Uh, we're at the end, everybody. Just so you know, like that's what we watch. The end, this is the end. Let's get to the end together. Let's we can start again, but you got to get. We got to get there. So the let me let, let's just go ahead. The other side is just to stop ensuring non-familial lifestyles. Correct. Um, so the, because, so let me ask you, so is the purpose of the law, the individual, the purpose of mm. polity, the purpose of legislation, the, the family? So this is the problem. That the legislation now is about the, is, we don't distinguish anymore between the via negativa of law preventing irreciprocal actions by the individual, but the purpose of the of the commons is to make it affordable to produce reproduction. And so, what's happening now is if you know, what divorce makes me furious with with child support and alimony, not only because it's been it's been hanging because I go through women. So it's, it's been hanging over my head my whole life, right? But because I see what happens is you have to have, instead of getting together and reducing the cost of having a family by having one household, you have two households and the increased cost of the family, which means you can't afford either household, right? So you so generate the man. You increase the, the cost of the reproduction. Correct. And so the only incentive is to not have kids. Whereas the, the, we need to reverse it, of course, and say, you know, if, you're a, if you're single, right, right? And uh, especially single, I don't want to say single woman, let's we'll just say single, right? And it, it, at some point, you have a, there needs to be not a marriage penalty, but a marriage benefit. Yeah, yeah you should get to vote when you have a family. You should be able to vote until you have a family. So. Correct. One of the prerequisites, maybe. Yeah, that would be good. I mean, that would be yeah, good. Excuse me. Like I didn't, right. That's a necessary but insufficient criteria. Right? That's a, yeah, very, at the very bare minimum, the family is the smallest political unit. And you right. better have a cohesive <laughs> set of people if that's going to be your schema. For the simple Otherwise, reason. it's going to be tighter. For the simple reason, no individual. In other words, no non-common <laughs> That, uh, uh, no individual need is greater than the family need, right? It might, you might be insurable, yeah. you might be defensible. In other words, you might, in other words, you need to have protection of the court, right? And you need to be insurable against mm -hmm. hardship. Yeah. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the government, that, that there should be any policies that are not towards the production of a family. Just as there no shouldn't be any that are not toward the production of economy, toward the production of a poly, production of a military, and the institutions that make it all possible. Um, you, we could, we could uh, negotiate inside of those marketplaces that you were talking about earlier, right? Each of them, and you could vote inside of those by your participation in them. If you if you have reproduced, you get to vote inside of the reproduction market and so on. I'm trying to think of some way of saying it as there is no political I. No. Right. You're on behalf of a group. You're saying something on behalf of a group. Right. There's no political I. Right. And there's only an individual I. So, there, so, uh, so anyway, so I'm, uh, I'm trying to get some way to. Is it even, is it, I guess what I'm asking is how controversial is this issue of the purpose of laws to, to regulate the individual uh, behavior, right? To prevent the via negativa. And the purpose of, of the legislature is the production of families, Commons. businesses, yeah. industries, polities. Those are the two forces that drive people together into cohesion through time. There's, there's no- Without being too brutal on them. So, so uh, is, this, is, that, is that really controversial? Well, it's if it's controversial, you're just wrong. 
It's you think that's wrong. You're just yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're you think it's controversial, you have an error in your thinking. It's the most the enemy and those under enemies influence. Well, I I think that the teaching the law is like the easy way to weed out people who don't see it. Because you have to say, see you say that again. In you, court, you think what? Teaching the law, it sorts people out who don't drive with it. Teaching and natural it, law. Yeah, it's a and it's apparent. Meaning, it's what we teach is correspondent. It's correspondent. Oh, it's so it's similar words, than what everyone else teaches. It corrects. You can't, you can't argue against natural law unless you're effectively in the law. You're, all, you're always arguing for an irreciprocity or an asymmetry or something like that, which are rational to seek, especially being trained into seeking them as a thing. We train people to seek asymmetries against this place. We prosecute frauds at an astounding rate. The fraudsters prosecute frauds against their mafia scheme at an astounding rate. I don't know what to tell people. This place is broken. I'm offering, we're offering one single rule with five criteria to mediate your interactions between people. And you, want, the five paperwork. Criteria are... yeah, you want paperwork and bureaucracy. Voluntary, what are the five criteria? Voluntary, fully informed, productive, warranted, and free from costs upon the demonstrated interests of others. It's just a recursive I would kiss you for that. Yeah, don't trespass on people. What I don't think people understand is proportionality. I don't think they know how to apply. I don't think they know how to apply reciprocity with agents that they can't be reciprocal with. They don't understand that you have to forbear for people who don't have the ability to be proportional with you, or you have to separate from them because you're not interested in a relationship with them demonstrably. Okay. Oh, by the way, that was really well done. Oh, thank you. You know, and, and what I like most is that like you, you used to be limiting yourself to like three word sentences. Uh, uh, that requires people understand me or that my impatience be apparent. <laughs> uh -huh. so again, again, it's a, it's a sorting mechanism. So, so Brad, what's your issue? What's your feeling with the family? No, that's the right answer. The family is the key unit and, um, yeah, to, uh, to, uh, have the legal system specifically oriented towards generation of that is is appropriate. It's it's the generation of the future, right? Yeah. We don't have the technology to stay alive longer or anything like that. Like you're generating the future. If if you are generating the future, you can have a say in how it's going to go. That's right. If you're not, like you can't. You're a dead end. So we're going to limit you limit your um, your participation in their decision making marketplaces. Limit your ability to increase the dead ends. I mean, the, you, the, have, the, you can have, you can be a dead end, but you're not going to be um, rewarded for it. What about restoring uh, the three, three or four um, liability? for interference in marriage. Oh my, yeah. Because it's a property that you're supposed to defend? Yes. Because mm -hmm. that's what marriage means. It means the public is insuring your relationship, your corporation. That's right. That's, why you, that's why you have people that's, there to witness it. That's why you have people there to witness it. Yep. It's because you're insured. The public mm -hmm. is insuring you, right, of non-interference. Yeah. So lie, the public, any, anyone who interferes in that marriage is liable. It means when people give you advice, they give it to you on behalf of your marriage. Yes. Uh, on behalf of you, not yeah. on behalf of your wife, which typically is on behalf of the children that we've created. You know, I got to tell you, uh, just as an aside, but hey, the way I work it is, uh, the way I, I've gotten out of this business because it's emotionally draining business. I used to give a lot of relationship advice. Um, and what I usually do is I do the opposite is I walk people through uh, what they're really mad about, get to the truth. Then I ask them, what's the worst that can happen? Oh. And then they always talk themselves into the relationship. Yes, because they understand what's because the worst. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, anyway, so liability for interference in a marriage. Liability for interference in employment. Mm -hmm. 
liability from interference in, in the business. Basically, this is all about canceling. And what's the one I forgot? Where is it? Health liability is one I'm missing one. Yeah, I'm just upset. I can't think of it. Well, uh, that, oh, this is an extension of it. Uh, it's the liability for interference in institutions of communication, transport, transaction, finance, and trade. In other words, that would mean like you could get kicked off of uh, Visa, MasterCard. Right? Uh, what do you, and so the last question is, um, uh, I'm, uh, it's along these lines, if that isn't clear. We have uh, currently, you can't um, fire somebody for like their religion. Uh, can, same thing for political position. Can you, can, could you, in other words, is, should we allow people to be fired for any reason whatsoever? If, if those religions or political positions are seditious. So my real question. Right, so is, there's a, there will be a question of, um, Forced association. I missed the I missed the question that you asked, Kurt. Uh, I'm asking. Brad got there. I'm uh, okay. asking the course of the question of forced association. Right now, we have protections against race, sex, religion, and I don't know what else. Sure, there shouldn't be protected classes because everyone is protected equally under the law. So, so my point is, if you're protected is that we, we want to restore voluntary disassociation as well. That's right. Right, but if you can't interfere in, are you interfering in someone's job if you fire them? Or someone's commerce or something. Well, I mean, it's different. It's, the question is the first party or third party. I don't no. want to work with you because you have a, what I consider is a, is a political belief. I don't want it shared among my, my people here. Right, uh, that is a very difficult question to answer, right? Because uh, uh, in, in in general, we've tried to limit in, in our history, we limit um, religious and political discussion from the workplace, uh, precisely because they're unchoosable and they're uh, frictionable. And Would they be unchoosable under our law? Meaning, if you're practicing religions like Judaism and Islam, or you're not practicing religions of war, just like you are, but I mean, let, let's just let, you know. For example, I was at a, I was having, I was asking, I asked a woman across the desk for me what she was doing for, for Christmas. Is we don't celebrate Christmas; we celebrate the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. You know, I don't know. Uh, you know, I, I don't think that's something to be celebrated, honestly. I understand you. I can't remember which which cult she's from, right? But it's one of the Christian denominations, right? And and I'm like, okay, well, the, the, uh, that's what I mean by a difference, right? Right. I mean, because really, there's a thousand, you know, there's hundreds, there's dozens of Christian sects, right? Sure. And they all there. I mean, I, I don't want to have some. I I just would. I just can't see why somebody's livelihood should be interfered with Excuse me, unless they bring it into the workplace. In other words, if you bring it into the workplace, I understand. I'm like- There's two things. So there's interaction between you and your employer contract, and that's completely separate from somebody outside the company bringing it. Correct, you know, so it's internal. Right. right. Yes. So I think that's the what that's the question I'm asking. Is it is it some is it capable? Are we capable of disambiguating this? We, like we have to make the distinguishment, but we have to distinguish between in group and out group all the time, every everywhere, right? Yeah. Employee, uh, the company, right? You have an in group. 
what I'm asking is, a, is a, maybe a, I'm trying to trying to expose as much as I can while asking a simple question. Is um, is it sufficient to say those non-interference claims for the third party? In other words, no third party can interfere. You can't call up my employer and, and say right. because I. Or, um, you could call up my employer as a customer and say that as a customer in this interaction or whatever, but you can't call this, this person's a political affiliation. Anymore. That would be a problem. Um, it, you same thing for doing it public, this person's political affiliation is whatever, therefore uh, I'm gonna talk shit about your company until you fire them. That's interfering in, in, in both the business and whatever. Um, if the person committed a crime, Right, this right, that's a different story, right? But you should, th that's a matter for the court, it's not a matter for the, 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 the means of sustenance, the individual. In other words, I'm trying to say, how do we preserve the go the individual as a going concern so he doesn't become a hazard on the population? In other words, and how do we stop the cancel culture because this is all violations, these are all violations of, of interference and third party. So the only question that comes about is you work, you guys worked, you know, we work together. So there's another person who has a different religious belief, right? Or different political belief or, you know, different sexual preference. I'm not trying to think, I can't think of too many, right? I mean, there aren't right. too many. Right? Uh, uh, and so uh, can we, can I fire, can we get together with our boss and fire that person? For that belief, and I, as far as I know, unless that belief is a crime, it seems hard. But on the other hand, um, uh, what if it's just causing harm to the business? Well, it, it, that's actually good. Okay, so, so it has to be causing some harm. Is it hot? Right. The, the question. The question becomes like, you have, me, you have people, to bring it. People have you to have to bring it in, and it has to cause harm. Now, like yeah. if if you're not sitting like. I was. I have a friend who's a, a, a Mormon, right? And his wife writes Mormon literature. There is such a thing. Yeah, there is such a thing. And he wrote. She wrote, and she's good at it. She's. I don't know. How, she's like fifteen books. Uh -huh. right? And he's always trying to convert me. And I'm like, dude, you know, first of all, it'll never happen. Second of all, uh, I can't. I I already can't figure it out if I'm a Catholic or a Protestant. And third, um, uh, I will not wear funny underwear. And, uh, and and fourth, it's incredibly insulting to me every time you bring this up. Uh, and so, um, but but he only did it when we were at his house. So I'm that's like, a, that's not inappropriate. That's not inappropriate, right? And so whenever he, he'd never know in business, right? He'd never know. I mean, I, I this this. He's one of those goofy guys. I got I got a couple of them. These big kind of dorky guys. They're kind of dorky in some way or nerdy is the right way. But when a big guy is nerdy, it's kind of dorky. I don't know how to describe that differentiation. Like a nerd has to be small and a big guy has to be dorky. I mean, I, these are just like 80s thoughts or something. But anyway, is that they're the kind of guys that they, if you put them on a project, everything will go well, despite the fact that they're not good developers. You know why? Because they talk good shit all the time. They're always talking about, did you do this, this? Hey, I was thinking about this, whatever. And you, you realize some of these people are the oil. They're the fine oil on project teams. And it's like, and everybody asks me, how good a developer is he? That's not the question. You want him on your team because you're going to have, because you're going to deliver on time. <laughs> it's like, he's not the project manager. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> he's like an antibiotic <laughs> he just affects the whole system and you see these guys i love them right but they're all kind of big and dorky and he's anyway i was making, i was going to go somewhere and tell you with that believe it or not there was a, there was a point to that segue anyway bringing it into the so but if you don't bring it in it's like the woman across from me she's like don't don't bring it in right you know I don't bring my politics in, but when I started writing about what I started writing and people saw it on my blog, they gave me some shit about it, but it actually worked the opposite. 
of what you think. It's like you're not, you are doing it out there. Well, I don't, I don't do it here. I just work about you and the customer and my investors and that's and doing the right thing. So, uh, so to me, I think that there is a standard of criteria we could have that says, uh, you know, of, that you have to, which is a criteria brand brought up, which is harm. We just have to bring dissonance in an environment. In other words, sed cultural sedition. And you have to, it has to cause some sort of harm. And that harm is not subjective harm. Yep. Right. It has to. All right. Okay. So that was my next, that was my other question. That was pretty good. It's measurable. And we're going to measure against all those markets. You said earlier, we're harming this market. Well, I mean, and that's the thing, right? Is once you start clarifying, there's only so many, the purpose of the law is to create cooperation. Cooperation is from the goods from which all goods we can be. The, the purpose of the cooperation is to be, all cooperation exists in a series of markets. We can enumerate those markets. We can say that the government's job is to facilitate each of those markets, right? Because it, each of those markets is a commons that produces a, a disproportionate goods for all members of the public, right? right? So then the government's job is to build markets. Okay, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> build and defend markets. Once you decide what's the government's job, right, now you have a frame by which decision making can be made, right? So that it isn't this arbitrary moral nonsense, right? The individual has a via negativa right to defense and, a, and we, pref, we prefer, we don't, you know, you don't have a right to it, but we can create a preference for via negativa insurance. If you're crippled or injured or you're born with a defect or you come or you have an accident or whatever, I mean, these are all things we need to insure people for because that's what that's what reciprocity within the limits of proportionality means. Is it means we're gonna I want to be insured and you want to be insured for those things that are that render us incapable of participating in a, at a level of self-determination by self-determined means. Right, and that's just a good. There's nothing wrong with that. Right, the difference is when that person is, is seditious, saying that I deserve more. Well, you don't. You don't deserve anything. You're being assured by other people. So I, I don't know. I just see this. The question is, how do we get the public? I go back to how do we get the public to raise to to see all these things. In other words, to edu how do we educate the public? So this is possible. So this conflict, so that there's a framework for understanding so that people can conduct trades. I mean, I, I just, it's just hard to get them there. I'm done with my rant now. I think we're doing pretty good. Yeah. All right, I ran out of energy. Uh, so uh, today, to, uh, Saturday, Brad and I will work online. Have you had any other inserts, any insights? No. Okay, I'm kind of distracted, and I didn't. I only got about four hours sleep last night, so I'm a little sh sh shaky today. Uh, yeah. But did, did we do okay? Yes. Yes. And uh, Brad, I apologize for conflating the meetings, but I so. No, I enjoyed it. Right. It's always a pleasure to uh, share some time with the gentlemen. Love you guys. So this is the end of the staff meeting for th Thursday, June thirtieth. By the way, Bart, I forgot again. I so I just posted the. Last nice staff meeting, and then I'll post. I'll post this one momentarily. Great, love you guys. Oh, by the way, sorry. Was there another one you were looking for? Well, some pretty old ones. I think one of them is from February, something like that. I consider I'm lost at this point. No, no, I, I haven't lost any. Well, There's that... just a lot of them. <laughs> So well, the one of them was where we were talking about the triangles. That's the old one. And then there's one where Luke was missing and we were going through the policies. There's one I didn't post because it was really didn't work out. That might have been that one. In other words, there was one of them, the sound didn't, didn't work. I think it might have been that one. I didn't know that. Oh, no, I, I just... You wouldn't have known that if I recorded it locally as a Zoom meeting and it just sounded, was, there was no sound. I may have just not said anything. Um, uh, the, there's a, the, so Zoom records 
meetings with a certain name, right? And I have multiple computers, so I might download it on. So then I got to bring all these together, and I got to synthesize all the names, make sure. Then I could go back to the ones that are up there and say, okay, what's there that's not here? And you know, so I I've done I've got the ones that are numbered so far back under two thousand, right? Two thousand. Those look pretty good to me. There, there. It's possible I missed one or two in there, and I'll if it has to do with triangles, that really bothers me because that was important. So I'll see if I can find that one, all right? All right. All right, love you guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.